before I continue creating geometry, I will open a floating panel for the uh, user interface controls. So that way I don't have to go back and forth uh, with this window. It's just much more practical to have a, a floating pane. So I will right click on the controls node, go to our parameter and channels and click on parameters. Now I'll have this floating window and we can actually make it to stay here. I can right click on this window bar and click on always on top. This way it won't disappear if I click uh, somewhere else in the interface. So the columns will be made of simple boxes. I will make a little bit more space here and create a box node. And for now, I just have parameters for the grid. So I will want to add a few parameters as I go. In this case, an important parameter would be the height of the column. And the column height would be dependent on the story height. So let's start with that. In my parameters for the controls, I will click on the gear icon, edit my parameter interface, and add, let's say, a float value. I will minimize this window for now. Actually, I have to move it to the right. And let's look for a float value, add it here and call it column height. Now, I, I will click on accept just to show you how the interface looks for now. And it's starting to get a little bit cluttered. So usually what I like to do is divide the information either with tabs or with separators just to visually better know what's happening, keep my user interface much more ordered. So I'll go back to the parameter interface and here under the, um, on the left side column, I will look for a folder and click on the right arrow. So as a folder name, I will add the name column and I will drag the column height into this folder. So you will notice how I'll now now we have a new a new tab here. So we could continually add different tabs or categories depending on the number of controls that we need. So we can also change the style of this folder. For example, say we don't want uh, a tab specifically, but maybe I'll change this to simple mode. And notice how we have a very nice separator here with a name of the folder to the top left and the name of my parameter. So in this case, since we already have a group and a separator, we'll just remove the, the name of column. This way it won't be redundant. I'll just leave the name of the height. And on the parameter name or the channel name, actually, I will add the name column height. And remember, you usually want to add a default. So I'll go to the Channels tab and I will add a default of 4. Although, remember that uh, we already have um, a story height defined, so maybe this will change. For now, let's leave it at, as 4. And the range I'll just 
add one meter as a minimum and click on accept so i will select my box node i will change its color again just for for me to know that it will be linked to some kind of parameter from the interface and i'll right click the height parameter copy the parameter and in the size of the box on the y size i will paste as a relative reference so let's make sure it's working there it is and one thing i want to change is the base of the column i don't want it to be underground i will create a very simple expression here on the center y this i've done before i will copy the value of the y size and paste it as a relative reference and then i will divide this value by two so no matter how high the column is it will always be based on the grid i think we are ready to copy the uh, the columns onto the grid points so i will click on the second button here from right to left to template the grid and i think i will turn off the viewport grid just not to be confused and i will create a copy to point node and i will connect the box on the first input and the grid on the second input and now i have my columns copied onto the grid now notice how they appear to be flat on the ground they're horizontal and usually we don't want that we want them to be vertical so i will add a point node find the point alt to change the direction of the normals of the grid so i will select the grid and click here on the display normals button and you'll notice um, we don't have normals yet so we need to define a normal direction and this is what i'm going to use the point node for so i'm going to scroll down find the keep normal change this to add normal and right now by default it will try to retrieve the actual normal value and apply it but since we still don't have a normal i will have to manually add this value for example i will make it point towards c so this is what the copy to points node will expect usually it will align an object to whatever c uh, direction of the normal you have a quick note on the point node that we just created if you recall this node is called point old the reason for that is that nowadays you would usually want to use vex for this kind of operations vex would be much faster and much more efficient for the purpose of this particular lesson i will stick to the point node and we will dive into vex in future lessons so just to uh, just for you to know the point node is changing or adding attributes on every single point of the geometry based on the parameters we're using here so in case of the normal we're adding a normal value 
pointing on the C direction of the grid on the positive C direction so let's continue with the creation of the geometry I'll click on the copy to point node just to visualize the entire geometry and I will reduce the number of columns for now I will create four columns on the width and probably five columns for the depth that should be enough for now and I'm going to get ahead uh, and think of what's going to happen once the model is finished we would usually want to add UVs or materials probably divide objects by color so I'm going to create two very important parameters for our geometry one will be a group name for each part of the building and the other will be a default color the color can be used for the final render or not or just to visualize on the viewport personally uh, personally I, I like to change the colors of each element in the viewport just to know uh, what's happening and to better understand the model so I will create a color node paste it under the box node and I will change the color of this node I will press the letter C change the color again this same uh, kind of purple color that I've been using and back in the interface the user interface I will edit the parameter interface and I will add a color parameter from the left side and click on the right arrow to add it just make sure this parameter is inside your folder and of course it will be named color and the channel name will be column color I will change the default to a gray to a very light gray so I will add 0.9 each of the values and now that we're here I will add a string parameter the string will be used to define the name of the group so I'm going to click on the string click on the right arrow I'm going to move it between the height and the color and change its name to group and the default for this string will be columns that would be the name of the group and we can now click on accept and notice how now we could copy the value of this parameter and channel reference to this node So let me see the viewport in a wireframe mode. So now we could change the color of the columns as we see fit. So for the name of the group, I will also copy this parameter and I will add a group node. usually I also want, uh, like to change the color of the groups and I will paste relative reference to this channel name so if we click on the info button we'll notice that we have one primitive group got called columns and we have six faces or six primitives in this group and of course when we copy the columns to the grid this group will be inherited to all the columns another very important parameter we want to define for the columns is a column width 
So let's do that right away. Here on my interface, I will click on Edit Parameter Interface and I will add a float value. Make sure it's inside of my column folder and we'll label this parameter with also make make sure to add a channel name i will call this column width and move it a bit upward make sure to define a default parameter a default value i will add 0.4 as a default and change the range to a minimum of 0.1 meters the maximum can be 2 meters and accept so let's channel reference this value I will copy the parameter and channel reference into the box into the X size of the box as well as the C size of the box and as usual check that everything is working so the columns are working fine now we can start adding other elements for example the slabs 